Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel Singh Teaches AI. Hope you have gone through the first video of introduction. Today, we'll be talking more about concept called probability. Uh, we'll see what we have seen probability as a student, as a school student, how we saw probability that time, and what probability is today. Means the core concept remains the same but the application varies now. We'll take an example of dice. So we all have played the game of Ludo and you know, no pawn in Ludo will move till you get a six. And of course you don't require three sixes because it will cancel your turn. So with that note, let's see what we have in probability for us. So first of all, the traditional way, uh, what probability is, probability is simply how likely anything is to, how likely it is to happen, anything. So when we are unsure about the outcome of any event, we can talk about what probability of certain outcomes is. For example, if you are tossing a coin, it's in the air, uh, just like how we start cricket matches captains choose a side, head or tail. So they, they, they are not sure what it will be. So the possibility is equally likely. 50% it could be head, 50% it could be tail. So how probability is defined? So if you think, so the formula, the formula part is number of favorable outcomes over total number of possible outcomes in this event, Tossing of coin for tail, it's one. Total number of outcomes, head plus tail, so one by two, which is 50%. Similarly, for head, it is number of head one by two, it's one by two. So 50% again. Maximum possibility of any event is one because it can happen, it can surely happen, it's one. It can never happen. The possibility of uh, raining on a sunny day is zero. So that's why uh, when you see probability of anything is zero, that means that scenario cannot occur. So with this, you know, a scenario cannot occur to scenario can occur. It ranges from zero to one. If it doesn't occur, it's zero. But if it's definitely there, it's one. So the probability lies between zero and one. This is what you have heard, what you have gone through uh, during your school days. One example, uh, if two coins are thrown simultaneously, uh, what is the probability of getting some when two dice are thrown? So on one dice, it's six digits, one, two, three, four, five, six. Similarly, on the other one, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are total 36 probabilities when we throw two dices, which is six factorial on one and six factorial on another, six, five, four, three, two, one on one, and similarly for the other one. So that makes the possibility of getting a sum of 10 on both the two dices. It can either be six and four, five and five, four and six. So there are three possible outcome of out of 36. So the possibility becomes one by 12. This is what we have seen in the older days, good old days. How we deal with the probabilities now? So first of all, just a way to show how it rolls. We know rolling a dice is all random. We never know which number will be there on the face. So uh, during earlier times, we tried many tricks. We rolled the dice or we threw it some, 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 we expected some magic that, okay, if we do this way, it will roll up to be six, but Actually, there is no order. It's a random distribution and a random outcome every time. And yes, uh, if you don't have dice, but you have uh, the pawns or the tickets, you can use Google roll dice for that. Let's have, so it's, it's Google Doc. Uh, let's have something similar of that sort, 
I'll just use random digits. Uh, random between we know it is between one and six always. It's showing one. If I change it, it will change to something else. So it's a random number, right? Now what will what um, it changed to three? I will copy it to say there are six turns. For example, and this is my dice one. So these random are from dice one. Similarly, if I'm throwing two dices, it's dice two. Similarly, dice three, so on. So we can have this random thing used anyways, anywhere. So you see, with any number changing, say if I am updating anywhere, the entire, the entire row shifts. So three dice are rolled, they are providing a random number. We can also have some sum of these, all, all of these. So for some, we can use sum from, yes, all these three. Similarly, sum of. So if these change, their sum will change. And I can also use average of all. Average from D2 to D7. As the numbers change, the average will get changed. Now, uh, this is when we have smaller data, when the data is smaller. What if the data is large? Say, I, uh, not just six, I have it by 1,000 or 10,000, whatever the data set can be anything. What if we are having it by, say, I'll go till 100 only. I'm not going to 1,000, but you'll understand the concept. So we are having entries. So you have now rolled the dice not six times, but 100 times. Not sure why it hasn't applied. All right. So you have rolled the dice hundred of times. But scenario is you are having say 20 dices and you have to roll it by 1000 times or say 100 times only. Then would you do this copy pasting and uh, use sheets for the same? Is there any way to do something extra? So we are currently using Google Sheets rolling dice probability. In the very first video, we talked about prompting. Let's see how prompting can help us with this data set. Now we are having 20 dices and rolled 400 times. Uh, so, you know, if it is casino or something like that, those gambling games, they have this much data. So every counter is filled. They are gambling. They are doing it so fast. So what case, how can I do it without copy pasting it? I cannot copy paste it every time. So for that, Let's use, let's see if we can use ChatGPT for that. ChatGPT can help us. In Google Sheets,
write a program for 20 different dices having random outputs and these outputs are 100 in 20 columns of the sheet also 21st column would show the sum of first Twenty columns. So same thing that we did uh, using. Okay, so it says you can achieve this using built-in functions. All right, we have done this already. So these things we have done already. Uh, it says, would you like Google Apps Script to automate this further? Sure. We'll like to see what it's showing it says open your google sheet click on extension app script delete any code in the script editor copy and paste the following code let's see what this code does so i'm, I'm not a, a programmer i'm i'm not programming anything so it is asking me to use it so even so that gives you a confidence that even if you are not good in programming ai is still for you So let's do as advised. This is our sheet. So extensions, app script. There is no code. Initially, there is no code. I'll delete everything, paste this code. So after pasting the code, what I have to do, click save, control S, click run. So control S, it's saving, save to drive, then run. Till it is executing, let's see what else. Go back to your sheet, 100 rows of dice rules should be generated. Let's see. Still executing. Okay. So authorization is provided, execution started, and execution completed. Just six minutes. Boom. So now it's 20 dices with 100 outputs and their sum. And I can easily average this. So simply average u2 to u1. So the average is nearly 70.6 because we see it's nearly plus minus 75 plus minus 70, 
70 plus minus 12, 13 nearly. So that's how you can use chat GPT, Google Docs, it's Google Sheet here, and Google Apps Script to simplify your work. Hope this made a change in how you think probability works. We'll be learning more in our next video. Till then, please subscribe the channel if you want to learn more. You can reach me at singteachesai at gmail.com. Any questions or queries, you can comment. Uh, I'll try to answer it once I get time. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.